Hello everyone, welcome to SparkFun Electronics. We have a couple new products this week and we also have a product from last week that we want to give a proper demonstration. So let's check it out. So first up, we have some products last week that we talked about but we didn't actually show the demo of. Um, reading the comments, we had um, some people talking about that they wanted to actually see the LED strips lit up. We did this in the previous video but these are some new products so why not just show it lit up. So I've got a strip here connected to an Arduino and I'll run you through the basics of how to hook one of these up and actually get it working. Um, here I've got the addressable weather sealed strip. So this is the addressable one. I'll talk about the non-addressable ones later. Um, the way we've got the addressable one hooked up is just like this. Um, I've just got some female headers running into the end of the plug and into it like this. And if we look closely on this strip, we can actually see that we've got nice little labels. We've got this arrow at the top that points this way. This is very important. This is the direction that the data flows. The electrons kind of flow along like that. So we actually have to give it a signal from this side. And if we daisy chain it, we connect it to the end and go on down the path like that. So and if we look closely, we can see that the green wire is actually connected here up at the top. We have our reds in the middle and then the yellow at the bottom. So in the middle, we see that that's 5 volts. So I've got my red hooked up to the 5 volts on the Arduino. I've got the green here at the top, which is the signal, hooked up to pin 6. And then here at the bottom, the ground, which is the yellow pin, hooked up to ground on the Arduino. And you notice that there's two extra pins on here. These are the red and the yellow, which is the power and the ground. So let's say you have a really long strip of these, or you have multiple strips connected together. You might be going, you will be going past the power requirements of what the Arduino can handle. So you would be powering it externally and you would be just using the Arduino to feed it the data signal. So that's how to hook this up. If you check out the tutorial on the website, we have a good description of not only how to hook this up, but also a library for you to get the code working. So we've just got some basic demo code running here on the Arduino. We'll turn off the lights, turn this on, and show you what it looks like with the demo code. So here you go. It's going to cycle through the red and cycle through the green and then theoretically cycle through the blue, perfect, and it'll start to do all sorts of different fadey color type stuff. Um, so this is just one of the strips. This is just the one meter. So just imagine what you could do with the five meters or multiples of these. They're pretty cool. And as you can see, each one of these LEDs can be individually controlled to be a different color. And there are 60 LEDs per meter. So you got 60 LEDs to play with and you can fully mix the red, the green, and the blue. So that is how you control the addressable strips. The RGB strips, um, the non-addressables, are slightly different. You have a voltage pin, which is labeled 12 volts, and then you have three additional pins, which are the R, the G, and the B. So if you were to ground those pins, you would get the respective red, green, or blue colors out of them. Now, to mix the colors, what you would need to do is you'd have, need to have some sort of uh, MOSFET to control the power. So you could use something like the um, power driver shield, which is um, a shield that we have for the Arduino that has some MOSFETs on top and lets you control up to six different channels. And so you can basically send a PWM value to those three different colors, and then you can turn on and off the individual colors to do your color mixing. So the addressables are actually a little bit easier to control in some aspects, but the other ones, um, you can control them just with MOSFETs. You don't really technically need a microcontroller. So that is how you control the addressable and the non-addressable RGB LED strips. So next up, we have a new 16x2 character display. This is different than our traditional um, displays, like this one right here. This is an OLED display. OLED stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode. The difference between this and the traditional LCD is eh, basically the nature of the technology that makes it work. But the biggest key difference is this does not actually use a physical backlight, um, whereas a traditional LED uses a backlight. So as you can see, even with the studio lights on in here, um, if you watched any of the previous videos that we've done, typically displays like this always look pretty washed out and it's really hard to see the contrast in them. With a OLED, you can see that there's a lot of contrast going on right there, and this looks fantastic in real life. So this is the main difference between an OLED and an LCD in terms of functionality. Um, they do draw a little bit less power than a traditional LCD does, but it's um, relatively small. But because of the backlight, if you're looking for a really low power application, um, you might want to look into an OLED. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to show you the difference between this and a traditional LCD and the difference of what they look like outside because when you start to get some direct sunlight on them, as you might well know, it really washes out a traditional LCD. Now this is one of our dimmer LCDs. Um, I tried to pick the one that was blue on yellow and the blue on yellow isn't exactly the brightest that we have, but this shows a pretty clear comparison of just how much brighter and how much more contrast there is in the OLED. We still really like these, they're still really useful, but if you're looking for something where you really need the extra contrast or really need the visibility and direct sunlight, you might want to check out an OLED as opposed to the LCD. So those are the new products we have for this week and the demonstration from one last week that we didn't fully properly demonstrate. And as always, if you have any suggestions for us of things that you want to see demoed, let us know. Put it down in the comments. Let us know if there's something you want to see if we haven't already done it in the product post. Um, we can certainly slip it into one of the product posts and show you what it looks like. So we'll see you again next week with more new products.